uh, what we did in the study was look at 69 million of these hospitalizations and looked at the difference between people who got an infection while they were in the hospital and compared those to very similar people matched on a number of characteristics to folks who did not get an infection while in the hospital and looked at the difference in length of stay, hospital costs, as well as um, uh, the likelihood of dying. There were 48,000 avoidable, potentially avoidable deaths associated with sepsis and pneumonia. Now, sepsis and pneumonia can be caused by a wide range of bacteria, including drug-resistant bacteria. But there were 48,000 deaths that could have been averted if these infections had been prevented in the hospital. Uh, we could have prevented about 2.3 million hospitalization days and about $8.1 billion in costs. If a patient happened to get an infection while they were in the hospital for a reason other than for an infectious disease, uh, they had a hospital stay that was about 11 days longer than someone who did not have uh, the infection. Uh, they had healthcare costs that were about $33,000 more and about 20% more likely to die if they got a sepsis in the hospital associated with having a surgery. Hospital acquired infections are a serious problem and they should be taken as seriously as one takes other threats like HIV AIDS, road traffic accidents, and, and firearm injuries, uh, and probably even more seriously given the large number of deaths. Um, hospital infections represent an easy way for us to reduce healthcare costs because they're both good for the patient, uh, for insurance, as well as for hospitals. Uh, th there are no losers in doing better infection control. Clearly, infection control practices reduce uh, the number of deaths and costs associated with get, having infections. But the other side of this is that we tend to use a lot of antibiotics to control those infections. And the use of those antibiotics leads to drug resistance. If we are to conserve the effectiveness of antibiotics, uh, which are a precious uh, natural and national resource, we need to do a much better job in infection control to prevent the need for those antibiotics in the first place. So lots of people do need antibiotics, and so we don't necessarily want to discourage prescribing, especially when it is appropriate. But there are many things that we can do to reduce the need for antibiotics. Uh, we can have better infection control in hospitals. Uh, we can have improved vaccination rates to reduce the need for antibiotics so people get less of influenza, for which a lot of people take antibiotics. Uh, we can figure out better strategies on how to use antibiotics, like in combinations or uh, multiple antibiotics, which are much less likely to lead to resistance. And we have to think creatively about incentives that different players in the health system have to use antibiotics. Right now, if I use antibiotics or if I demand antibiotics from my physician, neither my physician nor I bears the consequences of that use of antibiotics. That has to change.